Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to War in the Pacific, Admiral's Edition, our Let's Play series against Lieutenant Rainbow Slash. It's turn 122, it's April 6th, 1942, and we are just getting started on our turn replay for April 6th, 1942. We'll be issuing the orders for April 7th. Uh, we have, actually I didn't tell you guys this, but we transferred a lot of bombers to China this turn. Um, mainly with the hope of slowing down the Japanese armored blitzkrieg that is raging through northeastern China. So I was not terribly concerned with the situation in, nor in northeastern China. I'm already withdrawing considerable forces from Cyan in the south where there's clear terrain and it's just not a very defensible hex. But with the size of the Japanese armored formation moving up there, I think one thing is clear, and, and this is something that's been made... Oh, wait a minute. Fuck! There's a tanker just off the coast of Sumatra that our British submarine, the Trusty, fired torpedoes at, but the torpedoes missed. Damn it! Um, now, it's a good thing this is a TK instead of an AO. If it was an AO, I would think maybe it's supporting some sort of invasion north through the Strait of Malacca, because as you'll remember, we got some intel that the Japanese were play planning an invasion of Port Blair. A tanker can't do in, like in convoy refueling like an AO can. So assuming this TK designation is accurate, to me it seems more likely it's going to be trying to pick up oil out of Sabang and pull it back to Japan, or maybe out of Meden or somewhere along this rail line in the north, because there are oil producing facilities on the northern half of Sumatra. But that really sucks. Japan doesn't have a lot of tankers to spare, and the fact that we got torpedoes on one of them and they didn't, they didn't hit, that kind of sucks. Anyway, um... Yeah, so what I was saying is that the Japanese are launching sort of an armored blitzkrieg in northeastern China, and while we are withdrawing from Cyan into the mountains, I think we do need to slow the Japanese tanks down a little bit so we've got a little bit of time for our troops to dig in in the mountains. So we are setting up a little bit of a rear guard in Cyan. And then the other thing that I'm going to be doing this turn is I am going to be launching a series of uh, bomber attacks. We'll see how they end up, you know, manifesting themselves. But I transferred the bulk of our B-17s out of Rangoon into China, as well as some other like Blenheim 4s and some of the Chinese bombers themselves. I do know using bombers in China does actually use a considerable amount of supply, but I've been tracking the supply situation in China and it's actually getting better turn over turn. Uh, we're like 70,000 more supply in the Chinese theater than we started the war at. And there was a brief period where things dipped for a little bit, um, but it's actually back on the upswing and it's the supply in China is higher than it has ever been before. And while you never really have enough supply in China, the fact that it's going up tells me I can probably spend a little bit to use on bombings of Japanese armored formations to try and slow them down, to force them to convert from move formation into combat formation, which will substantially slow them down and buy me you know, six, seven, eight, nine days of extra time to withdraw and dig in in the mountains north of Cyan. It probably does also mean abandoning the um, the northern portion, northeastern portion of China, uh, and really focusing on digging in in the mountains on the approach to Chongqing, but we'll see. Meanwhile, the Japanese are continuing their bombing offensive in uh, the uh, along Java. So you can see they're Dropping quite a few payloads there. I didn't see a whole lot of damage to any of the aircraft on the ground. Meanwhile, 31 Sallies are pounding our infantry troops to the south of Sabang. I think those guys are largely cut off from any supply also, so this is really just bombing practice for the Sallies. Okay. Yeah, this is, I think it's the Kamikaze mod, but it's it's not the most up-to-date version of the mod. I'm not exactly sure which version it is, though. I got this, like, two years ago from something that XTRG, who was my opponent at the time, shared. And, um, it wasn't actually, he shared it with me. And I think he thought he was sharing with me the version he was using, but I don't think it was. And then he moved on to a different map version, and I kept using it, because I really like the the look of the map in this particular version so I, I don't even know that's the problem is i get a lot of people asking me like what mod is that and it's like well it's some variant on like the i think the kamikaze something or other mod um and uh i don't know which one and i don't think it's the most recent all right so here's our first bombing raid here in china 
So you can see we've got 10 B-17s, 5 A-29 Hudsons that we also moved in from Burma, and 3 DB-3Ms. You can see we did a considerable amount of damage. Now, granted, the Japanese have over a 1,000 vehicles, so it's not like we damaged a huge percentage of their troops. But these troops east of Cyan, 17 vehicles lost, two of them destroyed, 15 disabled. So that should slow them down. I'm assuming that's enough to force the formation into um, combat formation rather than move. Okay, so we've also got some Hudsons, which are hitting the Japanese troops south of Cyan. I didn't think I ordered anyone to attack those troops, but I guess they are. Six Blenheim 4s coming in on the Japanese armored formation as well. So no damage, but I believe a sort of a increased number of bombers on a target can still slow them down, even if it doesn't actually destroy any aircraft there. You hit four more Blenheims there. Six B-17Ds coming in. They're based out of Chungking. Six more enemy vehicles damaged or destroyed, one destroyed, five disabled. So I think that brings us up to, what, 23 total vehicles damaged or destroyed. Another six B-17s coming in here. We, we redeployed a just shy of 40 B-17s to China, although it doesn't look like they did any damage. Uh, one of the things I will say, TC, is the game actually gives you text files on all of the combat results, so it's relatively easy to pot, like basically to just keep track of all those text files. As you're moving from turn to turn, you can see like what's going on. Also, it's a big enough game and I spend enough time on it that even when I'm not doing turns for a couple of days or maybe a week or so, I still know like the overarching strategy and what the big things are to keep in mind. There's a lot of little, little. There's a lot of little things that uh, you know, new and Vulcan help me with uh, in terms of logistics and other things like that. That they really help um, keep a focus on and, and help me, frankly, manage uh, to some extent. Especially like Co does a great job around pilot training and other things like that. Um, but generally speaking, you know, there's there's enough going on that it's still front and center, you know, in my mind. Um, that I don't generally forget a ton of it. But there are a lot of little things. But when you've got multiple team members kind of helping you with it, it's easier to make sure you don't miss any big stuff. Meanwhile, you can see here, I honestly, this was something I missed, something I forgot about. Uh, I sent a heavy cruiser task force to bombard Mulman. I was thinking we would divert to Port Blair to hit the Japanese troops there, uh, but I guess I forgot to do that. And so these cruisers are streaking in to hit Mulman, which had been bombarded by Japanese, by, I'm uh, not Japanese, by British battleships a couple of turns ago. Um, and you can see here that we're bombarding the Japanese, or I guess maybe perhaps Royal Thai troops that are based out of Mulman. We'll go ahead and fast forward through this bombardment and see what it does for us. 181, 187 Japanese casualties, no combat squads disabled, which is interesting. Um, we had 14 uh, non-combatants, three destroyed, 11 disabled, four engineers disabled, and one gun destroyed. So not a ton of damage there. Four manpower hits, 808 fires, 10 airbase hits. That's actually a considerable amount of airbase hits. Um, one airbase supply, 14 runway hits. Eight port hits and four fuel hits, as well as two port supply. So I'm assuming, hopefully, the enemy base hadn't been rebuilt entirely from that battleship bombardment, and this built a little bit on it. Um, but you can see there a successful bombardment. It occurred after the air operations phase, so I think those cruisers will make it out without uh, getting bombed. So that's nice. Yeah, Ko, you're right. I should have had some uh, some aircraft set to recon mode, then they could have spotted for the bombardment, which would have made it more effective. Japanese shock attack against the 12th Chinese Corps here. Just an individual Japanese regiment. We do have a considerable force here in this town in the mountains to the north, um, but, uh, but just one sort of rear guard echelon here in the south near Ichang. And you can see the Japanese did did shoot us up pretty badly. But again, only one Japanese regiment. So I'm not too worried about them moving up that sparse road uh, from the south. At least at the moment, they don't seem to have a lot of troops there. Quite a few, cha few Chinese infantry squads destroyed in that core, though. Japanese deliberate attack at Cebu, where we've got the 81st Filipino Army Infantry Division, as well as the Cebu USN Base Force. We are lo low on supply, though. You can see the Chinese get a two to one. They reduce the fort from one to two. They do take about 200 casualties, mostly in disabled units. We lose about 335 more squads lost and disabled on our end than on theirs. Deliberate attack at Kolak with the SNLF force here against three troops 
Uh, this is actually the remnants of the Gull Battalion, actually. You can see two to one odds as well. They reduced the fort, but they don't take it quite yet. A little bit of disabled units on the Japanese side. A uh, fair number on our side. We won't hold there. We don't have any supply there. But the the, relevant, the the elements of the Gull Battalion that are left, I think, are too heavy to transport via air. Okay. The UI on the game definitely could use some improvement, but again, it is a 10 plus year old game. UI design has come a long way in the last 10 years, even in the war game space, I think. Some more attacks in central Sumatra. All right, so Coast Coast expands the size of the forts to two, which is nice because we have some Australian, some good Australian troops there. Catherine expands fortifications to three. That matters if they ever land at Darwin. I didn't see if there was anything changed in Darwin itself. I thought I saw something increase to four. I think we just threw a destroyer into refit phase in New Zealand. Uh, some partisan attacks in China due to lack of garrison. A couple of uh, armed cruiser, or I'm not sure, maybe they're mine layers arriving. Some, I think, newly reformed troops arriving in Chongqing. Let's go ahead and jump back into the turn. Okay, so where are we at here? First off, so we can see here that the Japanese still have 19 units with about 1,500 AFVs moving to the west. We did damage or destroy 23 of them, but that's a very small percentage of the 1,500. Uh, not many troops, though. You know, these guys seem to still... Oh, shit. They got four units into Cyan itself? Okay. I wonder if we have enough strength to throw them out. They do have two additional units on the way, as well as a third unit back behind it, but they have four units in Cyan. Now, we have reinforcements on the way there. First off, we have 2,700 assault value, as well as some pretty good Chinese cores here. I don't know what the composition of these four units are. If they're four divisions, that's probably a, not something we want to attack. If it's four brigades, we probably do want to attack. I did shift some of these troops that had been moving north to the south to try and make a little bit of a stand at Cyan to buy us some time in the north. But I wonder, let's see, we've got 600 assault value there. We've got an additional 800 coming on from the west. These guys will actually be arriving tomorrow. So at least 388 will be arriving tomorrow. 388, just the 388, but we'll get 388 more assault value tomorrow. That's definitely before these troops will arrive. Their next destination is going to be this hex. So we might get a chance to wreck some Japanese forces here. The darker units tend to be the bigger ones, I think, like divisions, but I'm not sure on that because we know there's divisions here and these are lighter. Um, hmm. The good thing is all of these units are prepped for Cyan, or at least the bulk of these units are prepped for Cyan, which gives them an attack bonus. I think the question is just whether we want to attack now or whether we want to attack next turn. We could go for a bombardment attack, and that'll give us some recon on what is actually there. And also, I think of these troops, we'll get another 500 assault value between these two cores, which will arrive in the next turn. So if we wait one day, we'll get another almost 800 assault value that'll bring us up to about 3,500. So we could just do a bombardment attack. There's no way they're going to get out of there in the next turn, and there's no way that reinforcements will arrive in the next turn. So we'll have to see, but these are four units. I'm guessing they're brigades based on our previous intel, but I would love to wreck four Japanese brigades 
which we could definitely do if we if we hit them hard and fast. I think waiting one turn is going to be the right approach. Probably do a bombardment attack first. That may also give them some fatigue and throw them into a little bit of disruption. Then when the extra, what, 800 assault value arrives and we're up to 3,500, then maybe we launch a shock attack to just try to completely obliterate the divisions. Shock attacks increase your RNG, so it does increase the likelihood that you get a bad die roll and, and as a result have a bad combat result, but they also increase the chance that you completely demolish something, whereas a deliberate attack, like you might drive him back, but it might be like, oh, please, sir, let me politely push you out of the way and let you withdraw in good order. So we'll have to see. But I'm thinking we will bombard this turn that'll give us the intel that we need about what the enemy troops are here, are that they have here. They won't have time to withdraw. It is clear terrain, which actually helps us, given we're going to be the attacker. And in one turn won't be enough time for him to dig his troops into a, a fort level. And then we will shock attack them in the next turn. And that will completely route and drive them back, I think. Meanwhile, there is one Japanese division or brigade, I can't, or regiment, I'm sorry, actually moving up from near Nanyang. We probably should hold this force here. These 1,100 assault value should probably hold at Anqing because this is into our rear. I was going to pull them back to defend the mountain passes up here, but if the Japanese move troops up this bad roadway here, they could flank us also. Sean Mack, I'll shock attack him just tomorrow, not today. The 76th Chinese Corps, meanwhile, is holding the rear guard. These guys just got wiped out, and I think we're going to hold them here because the next time the Japanese bring their armor in at an attack, I think they'll just destroy this unit, which will actually give me an option to reform them with 30% of their force reformed at Chongqing for free. So we'll probably do that. I don't know which cores are the new cores. Maybe these guys? I think this is a brand new core that just reformed based on what its configuration is. No engineers, rifle squads. This is probably a brand new formed core this turn. Shock attack is bad with the Chinese? Maybe, Ko. But if we've got enough, like, we'll have to wait and see what the Japanese or what the Japanese have here. If it's a bunch of brigades, for sure. They shouldn't, they shouldn't be able to do anything against that, right? All right. Um, meanwhile, we did move some troops into Cyan. Uh, we don't have any aviation support there, but it is on the way. I do have some SB3s, which are trying to bomb these Japanese uh, armored vehicles. We are also, we did rebase some, uh, where are they up here? Blenheim 4s up here to Langkau, which I believe we have some aviation support there, supporting those attacks. We also rebased some of the Flying Tigers out of Anqing, where we have a small amount of aviation support. And so these guys flew a, fl uh, a sweep over the Japanese armor. There were no Japanese fighters in cap formation up there. But we also did hit them with SB-3s and Hudsons. And then we have B-17s at Chongqing, which just launched an attack last turn. You can see here we have 32 B-17s. 24 of them are currently ready in combat formation. Um, and so we'll probably attack again. The fatigue levels are a little bit high on two of these bomber squads, but they're all below 20. And we do have to do what we can to slow them down. So we'll probably do that. I may, I did move, I think the P or no, two groups of hurricanes are moved into Chungking this turn. And so I may transfer them to Cyan to fly a sweep over these guys. Cause I'm assuming the Japanese are going to bring some fighters to, to bear here in long range cap. So if we do a fighter sweep with hurricanes out of Cyan, we do have the base forces moving back towards Cyan. Uh, they'll arrive in a turn. So that should uh, that should help get, keep these guys in fighting shape and continue to slow down the Japanese advance in northern China. Okay. Meanwhile, I still don't know what to think about this Japanese force at Quilin. Uh, did our reinforcements arrive? Not quite. Still at 2,200. But we've got good defenses at Quilin, level 3 forts. Um, Japanese have a couple of divisions here, but not enough to dislodge us at the moment. Uh, we do have a couple of additional cores on the way to strengthen our position there. We don't have enough to drive them out. They don't have enough to drive us out, I don't think. 
Meanwhile, our bombardment at Mulan determined that the Japanese only have 17,000 troops and 60 guns there. So that, if this recon from our cruisers is accurate, it's a little concerning. But to me, that says they moved some of their troops. Because if they really only have 17,000 troops there, this is going to be not a main force of, of, this might be a two tie divisions, if even. No AFVs is kind of a giveaway that this is more support troops. Which makes me kind of curious on whether we want to bring our divisions across. We are currently scouting across with the 6th Burma Rifle Battalion. They'll arrive tomorrow, so we'll get real intel about what's here. But And that battalion's going to get savaged anyway. They're not strong enough even to dislodge 60 guns. But I don't know where the Japanese main body went, because our intel before said there were a whole bunch more troops here than, than there is now. I suppose it could be bad intel. Meanwhile, we've got a bunch of cargo ships who just arrived at Rangoon this turn. Some of them are docked unloading. Some of them are not docked because I don't have enough dock space. But these guys are docked and they're unloaded. So let's get them out of the task force so that they take up they don't they don't take up dock space. These guys can't dock. Not enough port space, so they're unloading sort of in the roadstead, feel like rowboats and shit. Um, okay. All right. Well, they're all working on getting their supplies into Rangoon, and that supply does filter through the Burma Road from Rangoon into China, so uh, pumping a whole bunch of extra supply into Rangoon does actually help uh, us support those bomber offensives in China. We're at 50,000 at Rangoon right now. I think we moved about 2,000 forward to this front line near the Molmon. Pegu has about 17,000. Mandalay about 18,000. Malika 15,000. Let's show 12,000. So you can obviously see that supply is moving across. What's Chungking at? 27,000? That ain't bad. curious we don't have enough supply in any of these bases to like re-equip any of these groups with new aircraft right is the p-43 any good because apparently we've got three of those available and this group's currently fly flying hawks which are not good um these h81s could in theory Upgrade to Air Cobras right away, which would give them 27 aircraft versus 5, but it takes a long time for them to equip. They're about the same, if not worse, Neuhauser. Ugh. Well, lame. All right. No real activity in Burma, interestingly enough. We did spot the one tanker in the Strait of Malacca, but we haven't spotted anything else coming up to the north via recon or anything like that. Port Blair is at 70% for, to the level 3 fort. They're working on level 3 forts. Our cruisers are still hanging out at Mulmon. They're probably low on ammo after that bombardment. They're not that low. They could probably do another bombardment before withdrawing. Some of them are low. Could they do like a nighttime bombardment and then flee before the aircraft arrive? Or should we just run them out of there? I'm not sure. We could do long range cap out of Rangoon also. We've got the aircraft there to do that. Uh, meanwhile, Batavia was at, what, 92% last time? They're still at 92%. The Japanese bombing of, of Batavia is preventing us from building up any uh, any new forts there. Meanwhile, the Japanese division that had been pushing up the Java Peninsula has arrived at Batavia. It's just one division, but I don't think the Dutch troops here are good enough to drive it back. There's a bunch of like individual regiments and battalions and things like that. They're all very low training, all very low morale. Maybe not morale. Morale is okay, but experience is very low. I would love to try and drive the Japanese back and bloody their lead division, but I don't think that's feasible. Probably need to start disbanding some of these air groups too so that they can reform in a bit. They tried to take Tijalap last turn and failed. Meanwhile, they didn't bomb Darwin this turn, which is interesting. So I think our cargo ships basically got fully unloaded here. 
So we now have 14,000 supplies at Darwin. All of these cargo ships are empty, so we can go ahead and pull them back. I did have one Kitty Hawk squadron on the way to Darwin to provide some cap there. They're currently at Wyndham. 13 Kitty Hawks there. I think there's like two trailing back at Broom. Can we use the planes to bomb the troops in Batavia? Yeah, we can. The problem is the Japanese are sweeping with like 30 plus fighters multiple times a day, and I've got like 10 fighters at Batavia, so our bombers are going to get savaged. Japanese didn't attack again this turn at uh, Kaigan in Mindanao. They got bloodily repulsed a turn or two ago, but the supplies are gone now. So future attacks probably will succeed. Still just the two divisions at Clark Field for the Japanese. Our troops are in position here and are holding, and their supply situation is holding out for the time being. But there's no real reserves. You can see Bataan is down to 500 supplies. So that ain't good. But we're holding it in the, in the mountainous terrain near Clark Field. I guess that's an interesting question. Is holding at Clark Field with a level 1 fort for most of our troops, but level 3 terrain, is it better to hold there, or is it better to withdraw to level 2 terrain at Bataan, but level 4 forts? Which is better? Holding at Clark's better? Hmm. Interesting. Meanwhile, our carriers are making their way north because we did get some intel that the Japanese were going to try and land at Port Blair, so I was going to try and disrupt that, but you can see our carriers are here near the Coast Coast Islands, just north of the Coast Coast Islands this turn. I think they did some in... in uh, I guess they did some replenishment amongst their shipping. Some of the destroyers drew some fuel from the carriers in the last turn that probably slowed them down a little bit but you can see they are making progress here they're now west of Sumatra rather than Java no intel here about Japanese carriers as far as I can see we do know they have some cruisers in there APDs patrol gunboats we had spotted the light carriers at Singapore a few turns back. We haven't spotted them since. I'd call it mopping up operations right now at Sumatra. You can see there's just one base left at Padang. Really no supplies or reinforcements coming back. Port Blair's in good supply. Do we have another carrier at Colombo? Yes, I believe we do. There is another British carrier up north at Columba, the Formidable. She has 12 Albacore Ones, which are biplanes that can carry torpedoes. And then she has 19 Martlet Twos, which are basically a British version of the Wildcat fighter. So the Wildcats will be nice in any confrontation with the Japanese carriers. Also, our battleships did arrive back at Columbo. So we can go ahead and dock and replenish from port. But apparently they can't replenish their fuel. I guess they spent the whole turn replenishing those 15-inch artillery pieces here rather than loading up any fuel. They used most of their ops points up, right? I'm guessing, actually, they used up the port's naval ops points. Because there's only so many, like things the the port itself can do because they didn't use all their ops points you get a thousand so i'm guessing replenishing that uh ammunition was a was a considerable effort for the port facilities it does use up supply when you do that yeah i thought I thought when you manually did the uh, replenish from port, it would replenish the fuel. I guess it wouldn't because I had set it to do not refuel. Anyway, we're fully loaded back up with fuel now. We can't do anything, though, because we've used all a thousand of our ops points up. The question at this point is whether we'd want to send three more battleships into Mulma. And I know it's like spread out by a, by a week or three or four days, at least, between bombardments. But 
you might start to get a little bit of a snowball effect on the Japanese troops there. They're unlikely to completely replenish their disruption. Also, if we do decide to cross the river with the rest of these divisions here, it's probably going to take three or four days for the marching to occur, by which point our battleships might be able to arrive and bombard. But if the Japanese bring any carriers up from Singapore, those guys might be sitting ducks. Um, do we have any more supply coming into Rangoon? I think we've got about 14,000 coming in here. Some subs heading into the fray. I thought we had another task force coming around here somewhere with supplies. 7,000 here, 19,000 here. Okay. All right, so we looked at the Philippines, we looked at Burma, we looked at China. Not a lot going on in Australia as far as I can tell. Not a lot of uh, recon over the Japanese islands in the South Pacific either. Where are our troops? Ooh, these guys aren't doing so hot. <laughs> uh, 45th Brigade's at 27 disrupted squads. We are pulling elements of that out. So we've got 22 infantry sections, including 10 disrupted squads, which have made it out to Townsville. And then almost an equal, at least in terms of assault value, at Karen's, another 33 squads here. So we actually have caused 50 Indian infantry squads to escape to Australia, which is a considerable amount of squads to save. That's not inconsiderable. Um, you can see our load costs here are about 380 or 336 in troops, um, 585. Motorized support's not going to be able to get out via aircraft. So hopefully we can get the rest of these 28 squads out of, uh, of north of Port Moresby. They had been holding at Port Moresby. The 44th Indian Brigade is probably going to go poof before too long. They've only got 14 infantry sections left. But if I get to it, we'll try and pull those troops out also via air into Australia. Uh, meanwhile, we do have a Japanese division which arrived at Batavia, as I already said, so we probably should get these guys into combat mode since the Japanese, if they do attack us, they'd get a benefit for that. We're at about 1,000 assault value there. What's the, um, there's one good unit, though. There's the Gull Battalion, right? 36 assault value, 30 CMF infantry sections. These guys could really help the defense. Those are much better troops, training and experience, 61. I think the rest are all the Dutch troops, which are mostly colonial troops and generally not very experienced. Uh, Ambon continues to hold out. You can see here the Sparrow Battalion, which is another crack. I really think I made a big mistake transferring the Gull and Sparrow Battalions, which could be parts of the 8th Australian Infantry Division, which could be a really good unit. Um, by, by, by transferring these guys north, um, that was probably a big mistake, but anyway, we obviously can't form it up because the Lark Battalion was destroyed. I forget where they were destroyed. The 27th and 22nd Australian Brigades were also destroyed. I think those were destroyed. Were they on ships or maybe they were at, um, Sing Singapore cause they were assigned to the Malay army. So like, unless you do some gamey political stuff to pull them out. They're probably toast anyway. I can rebuild them, but I don't have the pools to rebuild them very well. Mr. Boot, thanks for the follow. Creative C63, thanks for the follow as well, uh, about 30 minutes ago. You can rebuild them, you just don't have the uh, the pool, the troops in the pool to do a good job of it. So if we go to our, um, where is it? Ground reinforcement pool. Oh, that's schedule. We go to our ground, I guess that's our industry and troops pool. And we filter everything out except the Australians. And we take a look at what's in the pool. Well, we've got, well, heavy industry doesn't matter, but for this anyway. Um, so pull out factories. So if we go here, we can see, well, we've got a ton of engineers we can pull in. So great. We can fill units, engineers out fully. We can fill its support, its motorized support, its engineer vehicles, sound detectors. Maybe we've got some tanks we could fill out, some two-pound anti-tank guns, probably enough of but we only have 
33 AIF Australian infantry sections, uh, 1942, when a division usually is like, what, 180 or something like that or more, 200 maybe, 270. So we've got some units here. We've got some Stuart One Light tanks. We've got some Melidia Twos. Um, you know, we do have some CMF squads as well, but you can see we've used 377 of these guys, 443 of these guys. Probably didn't do a good job of being... Uh, um, I didn't do a good job of policing how those replacements were getting pushed forward in the early days of the campaign, and that probably hurt me. You know, this is definitely a full division worth of replacements in there. But... We've been buying some destroyed units out, Co. Just not a ton. It's just the problem is I don't get a lot of, I don't get a lot of replacements to fill those units out. But like if we go to our destroyed ground units here, and we take a look at like what hasn't been recalled, well, a bunch of this stuff can't be recalled. We take a look at this here. We can see, let's see. So the FMSV brigade, in theory, could be recalled for 540 points, but they use Malayan squads, which I don't think you get any reinforcements for, so there's no reason to do that. Um, the 3rd Cavalry Regiment, an Indian Cavalry Regiment, yeah, maybe not a bad idea, but again, they use... Oh, wait, no, wrong unit. Um, they use Monmouth Harringtons. Now, there might be an upgrade for better weapons, but, like, I don't think I've got any of that. Um... This 27th Australian Brigade, that's one of those uh, brigades that was destroyed that I that was mentioned in the division. They need 108 infantry sections. If I reform them, we only get one. So I've got 33 units in the pool. That's not even close to forming up a full brigade there. Now, we get more over time, but right now, like, we, we don't have the resources in the pool to really make this worthwhile, in my opinion. Now, it's not too expensive. It's only what 25 political points to do it so maybe it's not a terrible idea ninth indian division here 288 indian infantry sections i don't think we have anything like that in the pool i didn't quite see um but again it was destroyed near singapore also those would be a great unit to have so i mean we can see we, we may look at doing that uh, i'm assuming i can look at like this punjab battalion here was destroyed how do i find out how much it costs Uh, I think just by selecting on it, right? So they'd cost 14 to recall. And they're not a big unit. We actually would probably have enough infantry infantry sections to build this unit out. But it's a smaller unit, so its impact on a, on a battle is going to be much more reduced. Um, what else? There's some base forces here, but I don't really need base forces right now. They're also largely Dutch units, so I don't really have much in the way of pooled units. This RN base force would probably be nice to have. Uh, Brens, aviation support, engineer support. Yeah, sure, why not? I've got I've got that stuff in in reserve. RAF base force stuff. What, what do they need? Aviation support, Brens, engineers. I got a million engineers in reserve, and they're only one political point. So probably overwhelm our aviation support replacements a little bit, building some of those units out, but not a terrible idea. Thanks for the follow, damn good breakfast. And I'll take a look at that. You know, maybe we'll consider one of the Australian units. We've got some additional base forces also. They can be very useful in building bases up. Um, meanwhile, is the Hornet done upgrading at Pearl? I think she's got to be close. Take a look here. Hornet has two more days until she's done refitting. She's the only carrier not in the Western Pacific, or I guess headed to the Indian Ocean. Uh, we've got three battleships at Pearl. I think they're all repairing as well. Actually, two of them are, the California and the Texas. They're both a little ways away. Then the Oklahoma has fully repaired. So 
I mean, that's the bulk of what's going on here, guys. This turn, we do have some supplies approaching Suva. We badly need to get these supplies into Suva. So we've got a task force coming in with about 41,000 supplies. Suva supplies are down to 15,000, which, like, if we're trying to expand and build this base up and make it more resilient to the Japanese, then we definitely want more supply there. We're expanding the port and the airfield, or sorry, the port and the fortifications at the moment. The port will be overstacked. The airfield's already a level 7, so this is a kick-ass bomber field uh, for four-engine bombers as well. Um, but the port could be a little bit larger to help, uh, you know, support large naval task forces. The risk in building this base up so much is if the Japanese do decide to attack and take the base, that could be sort of another rabaul uh, in their hands, really letting them shut everything down. But we do have a fair number of aircraft operating out of there as well. Some 20 P-40Bs, 19 more P-40Bs. Frankly, I need the supply to upgrade the uh, upgrade the group. We need 20,000 supply to upgrade this, this group from P-40Bs to P-40Es, which I want to do. We've got 44 in reserve. So what I'd like to do is upgrade this squadron to 25 P-40Bs. That'll then, or 20 P-40Es, that'll then give me 20 P-40Bs in the pool, which then I can pull eight of those into outfitting the 18th squadron to fill them up to, or sorry, six of them, to fill these guys up and then have 14 reserves. The P-40B is better than the E? Really? Whatever. I mean, I guess I'd rather two groups of 25. I'd rather 50 aircraft than 39. And you doing that will allow me to have 45 or 50 P-40s, both B and E variant. We also still do have some 18 F4, F3s uh, on the island as well. And so if we do get both those upgrades to occur, then we could end up having some 68 fighters, which is the equivalent of what, like three carriers, basically, um, all with pretty decent crews last I checked. Yeah, I mean, they might be able to expand. You never know. Uh, I forget who I was talking to. I think, um, uh, who was it? Was, uh, I'm trying to remember. It wasn't Battle Group and it wasn't Rainbow. Someone I know just took like Brisbane and Australia and they're in like June. So. Um, anyway, so that's kind of the major, the major plot points if you will right now we've got some logistics moving back and forth between australia we've got some aircraft some pursuit groups on their way to australia which does not have anywhere near enough aircraft at the moment so we actually have 25 p40es sort of in the final leg just passing new zealand to get to australia um 20 actually this is two groups of 25 p40es right so actually 50 p40s in these two transports and then I think we had, was that it? Was it just those 50 aircraft? We also have 25 P400 Air Cobras, 25 P39 Air Cobras. So I think we've got 100 fighter aircraft in this transport group closing in on Australia. So we could send them to Burma. They would be useful there, but it would be another month to get them there. And also, Australia just doesn't have enough Air Force here. If the Japanese did make a raid or they did try and do anything... I need to build up the East Coast and a little bit around Darwin to have a better defensive setup in Australia to make sure the Japanese can't take Australia. So there's that. Uh, we also do have another group up here with a Marine squadron here of F4, F3A Wildcats. They're not fully built out. There's only three aircraft in there, but they can upgrade to 18 aircraft and there are 30 of them in the pool. So they could pull those from the pool. Although we do need to be careful, as someone in the chat said, about our carrier squadrons needing to upgrade uh, to include a few more fighters in there also. So we probably want to save enough aircraft in our pools there to, to support that. Okay. Um, there's another group here somewhere. Uh, we've got some USN base forces and field artillery units, as well as a combat engineer regiment also heading west, although technically they're on their way to the Coast Coast Islands. I don't know that we'll actually send them there. And somewhere around here is the uh, Americal Division. Oh, they're much closer. The Americal Division. So the first U.S. Infantry Division 
not the first division, but our first sequentially uh, group of reinforcements, the Americal Division, could arrive in Australia in the next, what, two or three days probably? Or we could try and send them up to Burma to reinforce the situation up there. The problem is they're going to take a month to get there. I kind of wonder, it's probably not, but I wonder if it makes sense to unload these guys at Melbourne, move them on rail to like Perth, and then send them from Perth up there. I'm guessing the amount of days it'll take to unload them will be like three or four at least. Then to transfer them would probably be another five days. It would probably take longer to do that than to just keep them on the ships. The question is, is that what we want to do, right? Right now, Australia is vulnerable. We did bring one of the Australian divisions home, but it is vulnerable if the Japanese player gets aggressive and does want to land in Australia. It is vulnerable right now. An American division will go a long way toward equalizing that situation. The American divisions are very heavy. They've got a good amount of equipment and things like that that they can bring with them to bear, but they also, you know, we don't have a ton of them. Um... Trying to move these guys. Ninth Marine, Seventh Marine regiments have arrived, so that's nice. That's another two hundred and eighty assault by very high quality troops. The one ninety fourth tank battalion is also here. Currently, it has twenty one Stuarts. We're trying to get it up to the fifty nine, so we've got the fifty or so in the pool. So we are trying to upgrade it to uh, to get it to equip itself fully. That's a nice punching force. Sixty tanks. You say that, Co. but as soon as he lands two divisions in Australia, it's going to take us months to get reinforcements there. So we have to be prepared for what he might do, because if we aren't, it'll be too late. Uh, at least that's sort of where my head's at. If we send our reinforcements to the wrong place, we won't have time to fix our mistake. Okay, meanwhile, in terms of other repairs underway, Prince of, uh, Prince of Wales, 256, Repulse, 31. She's almost got all the major repairs out of the way. She can almost get out of the dockyards. Once we get these two flood and four engine repairs, major damage repaired, in theory, we could drop it into Pierside. I'm not sure if that would be faster or not. Pierside would get us out of the system damage in 14 days, as well as down to two and four. So that's about half the time of the current repair, but I also don't know how much of that's being created by these major issues. Yes, Snap, you do get some uh, considerable Australian reinforcements if the Japanese invade. Australia, but they have to go south, like to Brisbane. So they've got to get this far south in Australia. They can take Bowen, they can take Townsville, they can take Cairns, they can take Darwin, all without any repercussions, maybe even Perth, without any reinforcement repercussions. If they drop south of Brisbane, I believe, that's when you get a bunch of reinforcements, and those reinforcements come in at Aden. So you're still talking a month assuming you've even got the the troops troop transports in place you're still talking a month to get them get them out there the ship sumatra uh is she at cape town yeah so she took a torpedo northwest of australia you can see she's got a lot of flood flood damage she's going to be under repair for a while 58 more days well i don't know shu but i've seen them do it I've seen them take those bases, so supply might be a challenge, but they still managed to do it in a lot of PBMs somehow. Uh, meanwhile, in terms of aircraft losses this turn, it looks like the Japanese lost five. We lost three, a very light day, two Nels. In terms of top pilots, we lost two pilots, KIA. I don't think any of them were our top pilots. These all look about the same. I wish I told you who the two KIAs were. I think so, Co. That was that. That's right. I think Halcyon Strat is the one who, who is in the process of taking Australia. Okay. Uh, reinforcement schedules, ground units. 
How many more days till we get more troops? Looks like we get 257 in Chungking in 14 days, 390 in San Francisco in 15 days, the 32nd Infantry Division. I think this was the National Guard Infantry Division with a lot of uh, Wisconsin units based out of it that uh, fought a ton of operations in uh, New Guinea. I want to say they might have spent more time in direct combat with the Japanese in, in, than any other division, but I could be wrong. Thirty second is Wisconsin fun. Thanks. Um, we get two tank battalions in the next sixteen days, and then in twenty four days we get the fifty eighth separate infantry regiment. So we've got a bunch of American reinforcements on the way. That'll be nice. These tank battalions arrive in Hawaii, but they arrive restricted. Yeah, but Co, I could be really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me too much credit here. I, let's be real. I can be a really, really bad player too. Um, okay, so those guys arrive restricted, really? It'd be nice to use them. Meanwhile, air group reinforcements. We get some Kitty Hawks in a day at Townsville. Hell Divers in Eastern U.S. in two days. I think those are rail transfers. Um... Kitty Hawks in Canada in seven days. Beauforts in seven days at Aden. Vincent's in Auckland in eight days. B-17Es in Spokane in eight days. These guys, Some of these guys might be rail transfers too. I'm not sure. We get reinforcements in Tijilap in 16 days. Well, Tijilap will not be ours in the 16 days. I can pretty much assure that. Yeah, give it give it two weeks. We'll see if our carriers are intact in two weeks. Uh, meanwhile, let's see here. We did groups. We did troops. What about ships? One day we get the cargo ship Clan McBean. We get the Foxhound in two days and the Inconstant in two days so a couple of destroyers the heavy cruiser devonshire in eight days that'll be nice to have the atlanta in eight days and not a lot else for a while still the illustrious in 21 days okay what about ship withdrawals or is anything late right now nope all right we're good there Group withdraws. I think some of those fighter units in Rangoon are getting close. 29 days for a bunch of those American units in Rangoon. So still about a month left. I don't want to pull any of those guys out yet. I know you still get the pilots like at least two weeks out. So I think we've got them around for at least 10 more days. Maybe we'll send some of them to fight in China. I don't know. Um, but I have withdrawn units and kept their pilots in the pools inside like inside a month before so we've been okay there uh p warner wisconsin was supposed to have an nhl team that's why they built the bradley center the bradley family built the bradley center and gave it to the city of milwaukee as a gift to try and bring an nhl team to milwaukee and it didn't manifest itself but they literally the family paid for 100 percent of a modern arena in 87 or 89 or something like that and gave it to the city to try and bring an NHL team. They were huge NHL fans. They're big patrons of the city and uh, didn't didn't manifest itself. Um, okay. Yeah, so I think that's about it, guys. I think that's all I've got for you in this particular stream. Unless there's anything else you guys would like to see, I think we covered it all. Uh, we'll see how the China situation shapes up. I'm imagining there's going to be some cap over these tanks in the next turn or two we need to keep pounding them to try and slow them down and then not today but tomorrow i think we will launch a shock attack in cyan we will do a bombardment attack here to see what the japanese have here but i think they 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 pursued us a little bit too quick he saw that i was withdrawing out of cyan and so he raced after me to try and catch up but then i about faced and held our troops in cyan before he realized the mistake and marched his troops right on in and so he might be thinking like, oh, I'm going to slow him down. 
but I don't think it's going to be a very effective move. I think he's going to get a couple of units really, really badly bloodied. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up here tonight. So I hope you guys enjoyed yet another episode of our War in the Pacific Let's Play series against Lieutenant Rainbow Slash. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.